look who's back from the dead! Hello fellow speeders, it's me Demetrius Villa, the president of the High Speed Rail America Club, with another episode on America's quest for bullet train greatness. Now 2017 has been a great year for infrastructure progress here in the United States and you can see construction going on across America. For example, in New Jersey in the tri-state area, they broke ground last week on the new Portal Bridge as part of the larger gateway project to better connect the highly trafficked area of the New York metropolitan area. The Swing Bridge has been a critical point of failure in the last several years for Amtrak and New Jersey Transit, stemming from the fact that the bridge has a 15% closure fail rate when it switches from letting tugs and barges through back to trains. Oh, and the fact that it's over 111 years old, which seems to be a common theme for the Northeast Corridor with bridges and tunnels and other major infrastructure. Some other bridges are over 100 years old, like the Susquehanna Bridge in Maryland, also built in 1906. And then there are tunnels that come from the century even before that, like the Baltimore and Potomac Tunnels from 1873. Might I mention that these antique pieces are carrying hundreds of trains a day? So it's always a fantastic thing that we're finally moving into the current century and replacing these pieces of infrastructure to allow more trains, faster trains, and excess also allowing in more people and allowing the economy to flow even faster. The entire Gateway project in New York and New Jersey is an over $30 billion project to expand everything from Penn Station, rail yards, tunnels, tracks, bridges, and everything in between for the entire area. The portal bridge replacement alone is expecting to range at around $1.5 billion with the states of New York and New Jersey picking up on about half the cost. And the Trump budget bill expected to fund about $900 million towards the bridge and other projects for next year. It still remains a mystery how much of Chris Crispy's, Christie's diet budget has been stowed off for this, but we're estimating at around 4 days. Now it's always great to see if Republicans and Democrats actually working together on infrastructure as it seems it's the only thing they can slightly agree on. So it should be sooner rather than later that the new Porter Bridge will be carrying everything in New Jersey from New Jersey Transit to Chris Christie and commuter trains to high speed trains. Which speaking of high speed trains, which is of course the name of our channel, a new paint job for the Avelia Liberty has been revealed by the French manufacturer Alstom. The Avelias are the upcoming fleet of high-speed trains to replace the current Acela and will be more maneuverable with tilting technology and able to reach speeds of 186 miles an hour, although they'll be limited to 160 miles an hour at the start. Being built and assembled in Hornell, New York, the trains will be sporting a homegrown good old red, white, and blue livery. It's amazing to see the technology being put into the train sets and if the technology will translate into the rest of the infrastructure where the Acela is currently running on, it will be able to make this service a total success as the current Acela has been held back mostly from running at full potential because of the speed limits on the aging infrastructure that we just recently went over. Across the country this month, California is also moving forward in constructing its ambitious high-speed rail project to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco as progress begins to speed up and there finally seems to be a recommendation for an operator. The German rail company Deutsche Bahn, also acronymized as DB, has been recommended for the early operations contract, reported to be the highest ranking group ahead of the Spanish company Renfe, Italy's FS First Rail Group, and China's HSR ETO respectively. No clue where the Japanese JR companies are, but they seem to already be tied up in Texas at the moment, and Francis Alstom, as we mentioned earlier, already called dibs in the Northeast. DB, once awarded the contract, will be consulting the California High Speed Rail Authority on rolling stock procurement, station and track operations, marketing, branding, ridership and revenue forecast, financial cost of assets, and basically teaching us Americans how to run Baby Burger's first bullet train. We'll get up there. There's no word yet on if there will be an In-N-Out Burger on the train, but I can't guarantee you. It is an overrated meme restaurant. I just went there not too long ago. It's great, but I mean, come on, guys, it's nowhere near perfect. 
The same can be said for California's high-speed rail project, as it has had to tackle delays after deadlines, after cost revenues, and more delays, and, and so far the only deadline it has met is spending all the delicious stimulus money from the Obama administration for September of 2017. But only meeting half the requirements, as its first section was also slated to be completed on that month as well, but as you can see, it's chugging along, and unlike in and out Burger, hasn't been so speedy. But we'll get there. The same can be said here in sunny Sloth, Florida, as Brightline has delivered on it and to bring all the necessary trains to run America's first privately run passenger rail service in decades. But local and state governments haven't held up to the task in keeping up. Its fifth train, dubbed Bright Red, arrived earlier this month in its West Palm Beach facility, fresh out of the Siemens factory from Sacramento, California. Now, Brightline was originally stated to begin operations for Phase 1, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach earlier this summer. But that has been pushed back towards the end of the year because of a number of reasons. Big one being this <laughs> hurricane. Luckily, two weeks without electricity later and several mountains of trash piled up everywhere and everything is back to normal, including our local politics. Many of the local communities and jurisdictions have been pushing back a lot of the grade construction upgrades in spring and summer for reasons including traffic and disruptions to commuting. You know, so Florida East Coast will have to do the upgrades during the very busy holiday season when there's even more traffic and disruptions. But hey, if you delay the construction long enough, your constituents won't have to see it, right? Then there are the constant issues from the citizens against rail expansion up in the Treasure Coast, which at this point is still limping at the situation like zombies now, but more specifically like the boomers from Left 4 Dead. You get the reference, right? Just continuing a pile of lawsuits and court cases that keep you know, piling on failure after failure. The only thing that's missing now is a bad case of gas from the opposition. Oh. Oh, it seems they're already doing that. With how it's looking now, Brightline is expected to finally start service between Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach by the end of this year, with Phase 2 to Orlando starting somewhere between 2019 to 2020. So around the country, there seems to be two conflicting conditions. Constructions and delays, which are pretty normal for better or for worse for modern infrastructure building around the world. You may remember some time ago we actually did a report on the construction of the Haramain high-speed railway in Saudi Arabia between the cities of Jeddah and Mecca. Well, the Spanish consortium awoke from its siesta and the first run of the Talga bullet trains on the high-speed rail line was, cons was just conducted on October 17th. With a top speed of around 220 miles an hour, the entire 280 mile line will connect Mecca, Jeddah, the King Abdul Aziz, the King Abdul Aziz International Airport in Jeddah, and the King Abdullah Economic Center near Mecca. And if you haven't noticed already, Saudi Arabia is apparently a monarchy. But just to say, this project goes to show that eventually, all these sorts of projects for high speed rail do get done at some point or another. And now many developed and rapidly developing countries are pushing for high speed rail as an alternative to moving massive amounts of people in between cities, rather than building more highways and more airports. You may be familiar with countries such as Germany, France, China, Korea, Spain, England, of course, Japan, that have been already have high speed rail and have already developed it for the past 50 years and more. Well, take a look at the rest of the world. Morocco, yes, on the African continent, has been testing a French-made TGV train that has been running above 170 miles an hour on a 200-mile track. Malaysia and Singapore are about to embark on building a high-speed rail line to connect Kuala Lumpur to Singapore. And they're already showing off station designs and bidding has begun between multiple companies from all over the world, contending with who will build this system. Even in India, the Japanese are building a high-speed rail line in between two of India's biggest cities, with expansions that will follow it thereafter. So it seems now that everybody around the world has figured out that high-speed rail is the best alternative to moving people 
between 200 and 700 miles. That's considered the sweet spot mileage for high speed rail in between cities and constructing it. And even now this channel has been growing because of that also too as well that more people are beginning to figure that out. And we just recently reached a tremendous milestone, 3,000 subscribers for the High Speed Rail America Club. And it's it's been an incredible journey. I remember it was like yesterday that we got 100 subscribers and now, you know, up to 200, 300 and, you know, keeps going on and on and on and get 3,000 subscribers. It has been an incredible journey and a journey that's going to keep continuing on also too. I know recently now it's been... Uh, pretty hectic for me, especially since I just graduated. I've been going around looking for work also too as well And you know also around here in the area. It's been a little hard for me to Record especially with all the you know the work that I've been doing also too as well with you know My part-time job and trying to keep up and save up money and also looking for work doing other work also too as well It's been pretty hard and you know I have kind of neglected the channel because of all that work but after I finally do get settled down with you know whatever it is that I'm going to do and finally have the free time in order to get this done this is something definitely that I will keep continuing on for the High Speed Rail America Club channel and also you are going to see this week a new episode which I have been working on in regards to the Japan trip that I took back in the summer so I have again hundreds of gigabytes of videos that I took over there and like a lot of stuff that I'm still trying to wrap my mind around so it's pretty hard to get that all in there and organize it in but you know finally now I have a plan of what I'm going to do with all that and drop it in in between days to show how the travel is over in Japan what the lessons can be brought over here into the United States etc etc and I still actually have some mementos from over there as you can see here I have this transformer action figure from I guess they have an anime series I never heard of in Japan it's called Shinkalion uh, I guess a play a pun there upon Evangelion so pretty funny this guy turns into a N700 and they have this also too this Dr. Yellow that I have over here as you can see I actually saw the real one over there which apparently according to most people it's actually pretty rare to see Dr. Yellow in the wild so that I actually got to see him the first day well they call him a he since he's a doctor uh, the train <laughs> but to see that train the first day that I got there, well not the first day, the second night that I got there on the first trip that I got there, it's, I, I guess it means it's pretty lucky, especially for somebody who's been working on high speed rail for a pretty long time and trying to bring it over here to the United States. So that's sort of going to be the plan for now on also too as well, that we're going to keep doing the Japan videos alongside doing a regular update videos and also we're going to try to bring in more people also too because big news, we just reached a patreon milestone also too as well so because of that I am going to see if I can put in more interviews with people with including professionals and other advocates in the United States and around the globe that are bringing high-speed rail into the United States and into their own countries as well because we're all in this together if you know if each country can be able to work on its own infrastructure to the best everybody succeeds so that's that's the thing when you work on yourself everybody else is working on themselves and doing the best for themselves everybody can succeed in that so that's that's always a good thing and if you do want to support us on patreon please feel free to do so because YouTube has not been kind to its creators and that means every creator also too as well no matter if you're on the left or on the right uh, everybody's been getting hammered by YouTube so the, the only way I can you know continue to make these videos also too and be able to put in more effort now that you know, I have a little bit more free time and, you know, I can be able to continue the support for this channel also too as well. Please support this channel on Patreon. Any little bit helps also too as well. And also the best thing, if you can't even, you know, get monetary, the best thing you can also do is subscribe to the High Speed Rail America Club. And also be sure to put on your notification alert. Click that little bell in order to get the first message to get the videos delivered to your inbox and delivered on your phone also too as well because it's always nice when you go on your phone and you want to see something oh here comes the update for the new high speed rail america club video even though it hasn't come up in the last uh two months or so because of work but now finally i've been having the free time in order to do this and things are getting a little bit more settled now so now i'm going to put more focus into this and everything else also too as well for the high speed rail america club Again, it's been a wonderful journey 
3,000 subscribers. Here's to the next 3,000 more. We'll see you guys next time. Gateway project to better connect the highly trafficked area of the New York metropolitan area. The swing bridge has been a critical point of failure in the last several years for Amtrak and New Jersey Transit, stemming from the fact that the bridge has a 15% closure fail rate when it switches from letting tugs and barges through back to trains. Oh, and the fact that it's over 111 years old which seems to be a common theme for the Northeast Corridor with bridges and tunnels and other major infrastructure. Some other bridges are over a hundred years old, like the Susquehanna Bridge in Maryland, also built in 1900. As it seems it's the only thing they can slightly agree on. So it should be sooner rather than later that the new Porter Bridge will be carrying everything in New Jersey from New Jersey Transit to Chris Christie and commuter trains to high speed trains. Which, speaking of high speed trains, which is of course the name of our channel, a new paint job for the Avalia Liberty has been revealed by the French manufacturer Alstom. The Avalias are the upcoming fleet of high speed trains to replace the current Acela and will be more maneuverable with tilting technology and able to reach speeds of 06. And then there are tunnels that come from the century even before that, like the Baltimore and Potomac tunnels from 1873. Might I mention that these antique pieces are carrying hundreds of trains a day? So it's always a fantastic thing that we're finally moving into the current century and replacing these pieces of infrastructure to allow more trains, faster trains, and excess also allowing in more people and allowing the economy to flow even faster. The entire Gateway project in New York and New Jersey is an over $30 billion project to expand everything from Penn Station, Rail Yard, well look who's back from the dead! Hello fellow speeders, it's me Demetrius Villa, the president of the High Speed Rail America Club with another episode on America's quest for bullet train greatness. Now 2017 has been a great year for infrastructure progress here in the United States and you can see construction going on across America. For example, in New Jersey in the tri-state area, they broke ground last week on the new Portal Bridge as part of the larger gates, tunnels, tracks, bridges, and everything in between for the entire area. The Portal Bridge replacement alone is expecting to range at around $1.5 billion with the states of New York and New Jersey picking up on about half the cost. And the Trump budget bill expected to fund about $900 million towards the bridge and other projects for next year. It still remains a mystery how much of Chris Crispy's, Christie's diet budget has been stowed off for this, but we're estimating it around four days. Now, it's always great to see if Republicans and Democrats actually working together on infrastructure. And